or is it a combination of two and even if it is created let us presume or if it exists on the stage how does it come to me it's fine uh, there is a great dancer he she enjoys dancing and she is in a state of rasa but how does that travel to me can it travel to me unless it comes to me there is no theatrical communication as a matter of fact there is no abhinay because if you remember we defined abhinay as the natasha says that yasmat prayogam nayate tasmat abhinaya smritah so abhinay is not just moving the hands or making certain kinetic and verbal movements but it is communicating so unless rasa is communicated the audience the prekshaka will have nothing and why should they come to theater so these are the questions which were discussed in india northern text and aryan text and there is a lot of material which people uh, have written and so don't pay attention to that pay attention to what is in the text when i say it is an all india text i say it on the basis of what is found in the text for instance yesterday we talked about pravritti that people in different parts of india have different tastes so in tamil nadu or in the southern dakshinatya in these regions they would like a production which has more of song and dance which is not the case with our dear friends in haryana huh? they want a different kind of performance and then we talked about in pravritti the eastern and the western so unless there was an all india text unless there were performers traveling from one end of the country to another why on earth would this concept of pravritti be brought into the 11 elements which make up natya essential 11 elements rasa bhava hi avne etc out of which pravritti is one it can only be so if there were all india performances if there were exchanges if people were traveling from one end to another that is the only logic that professionals had to perform in different parts of the country and hence they had to be aware of what is to be performed and how is performance to be adjusted to the local taste so that it is a greater success there are many things as you will will go along and as you will read more and more of the text then you will find especially when we read the 17th chapter the chapter on languages and all that so you would get an emergence a, a, a very accurate picture of what was theater like what was the performing arts scenario in uh, this period now to come back to rasa that how does it get communicated these are the questions i said yesterday that now after having talked to you about the rasa sutra and the illustrative sutra rasa sutra is the concept tatra vibhavan bhav vyabhichari samyogat ras nishpatti and we explained the term vibhav bhav sanchari bhav sthayi bhav nishpatti and ras we'll talk about today now at this point uh be, be aware of something very significant why is it that these terms like vibhav anubhav are created 
what is the need for the Shastrakar, for Bharat Muni or the intellectuals writing about performing tradition? What was the need for them to create these terms? Why did they make this terminology? They could have easily said that yes, rasa is created by angik, vachik, sattvik, abhine, by hand, gestures, movements, etc. And that would have been an accurate description. Why make the term vibhava? Define it. Vibhavyate tibhava. Then bhava. Bhavanti tibhava va. Bhavayanti tibhava va. Just because they exist, are they bhavas? Or because they expand, are they bhavas? Why is it that all these definitions are given? Is it just because you want to say something in a small string of words or sutra? Is it only for educational purposes that I make a little code language and then I teach that and it is easy to transmit it? Yes, it is so. It does help when you make sutras and when you make texts, sutra texts, like so many hundreds and hundreds of texts in India, then you have a technology of education, of transmission of knowledge granted. But more than that, when you make these definitions, then you can take these definitions from one art form to another. Right? The term vibhav then becomes a common term for the instrument of communication. Because in this context, who is the vibhava? The actor, the nutter, right? And as I was at pains to tell you yesterday, then it is not just the nutter, but also the backdrop. Also the dress. So sattvic, vachik, angik, aharya and nepathya, the technical term for backdrop or scenery, etc. in classical performing art languages, nepathya. All this becomes vibhava. You have taken this from the world of theatre. Now you can transport this term vibhava from theatre to painting. So, the canvas, the brush, the colour, the medium, which may not be the brush and color, which may be black ink, right? Just black ink or chalk or something else. You know, there's endless medium of painting. There's so many kinds of, or stone engraving. All this becomes a vibhava. And so, when you want to discuss the whole process of art as communication, as aesthetics, then you have a terminology which can be handled philosophically. For instance, uh, you may not be familiar with it, but when we do what we call uh, philology, or when we do the science of meaning, how language generates meaning, then we need this terminology, right? What do you communicate? And when you study of meaning, how meaning it is precisely these terms that become very Right? So, the advantage of creating these terms is not just to have the ability to put them into the sutra. It's 
not merely that. It is also to handle them, to give them an independence and width of definition that it can cover art, painting, poetry, and maybe any kind of performance, including political performance. After all, an orator is also a performer. He or she is also performing. giving meaning so if you want to talk of all these things together in a different science or a different discipline which is not just natya or not just performing arts then these terms become useful to you so this is what i wanted to tell you and coming back to performing arts we will see how these terms are useful in analysis of the aesthetic experience or the experience of enjoying a performance or namely ras nishpatti so let us begin with the first acharya as i said yesterday there are four major interpretations in history of ras sutra most or nearly all of them coming from kashmir from 7th century 5th century onwards and all of them expounding on the questions which we just raised who experiences rasa why is a character real unreal all these questions are taken up now the first acharya is called lollat there is no work of his that has come to us as an independent work but because it was cited in other works so we know of his position now in the indian philosophic tradition there is one thing very good that when they wanted to contradict the position the principles the ideas the presumptions of a different philosophic system or an opinion then they very accurately cited the view of the opponent it was considered total dishonesty and unworthiness to distort the view of the other you had to represent his or her view as it was and then you proceed to demolish that position so we can be quite clear that when different people and particularly acharya abhinav gupta when he mentions this is what lollat says then we can be sure that yes this is what he had said <laughs> because the tradition was really bound to the fact not to misrepresent the opponent the opponent had to be quoted correctly your skill lay in your ability to demolish the position to change the position not in trying to do in any hanky panky as we do today you know uh, today a statement is made on the television and then 2 hours later everybody says oh you know this is not what i meant so <laughs> this is not this was not the method what does lollat says he says something very simple closer to the rasa sutra he says when there is a union a sanyog samyogat ras nishpatti sanyog of vibhavas and others with sthai then there is emergence of rasa i am not going to read out the original text as it is not uh, something needed here when there is a union of vibhavas and others with sthai then there is emergence of rasa so this is more or less a repetition of what the text says sthayano eva rasatvam apnuvanti sthais are the ones which come to the category or the degree of rasa here vibhav is the cause of the birth of a mental state which is full of sthai bhavas this is also pretty simple as the text says but 
it's not exactly what the text says here he is asserting he says vibhava is the cause of creating